Two. So today we are going to start tutorial series on making an anime kitchen in Blender. Right. So first you need to have a reference. It's best to keep one reference or as little as references as possible because if you have multiple references it's going to be a bit um, your models and your textures are going to be a bit all over the place. So it's best to stick to one or as little references as possible. But today we're just going to speak about basic modeling techniques to keep your scene a bit um, clean and not as jumbled up as if you have uh, like thousands of vertices. So we are going to start uh, on one of these cupboards. I'm not going to model everything in this video but I'm going to show the different techniques I use. So for the example of the cupboard I cut it in half and I brought a murder modifier so that I don't have to focus on both sides I just need to focus on one and then the murder modifier just copies the other side you know. And I also used some loop cuts and extruded some parts. As you can see here in the video, I'm just going to explain some of the techniques uh, when it's not very clear. So you should try to keep the scene as low poly as possible. Not low poly in the sense of a lot of faces or hard faces, but uh, low poly as in uh, this statistic corner here. It shouldn't be too much. I think maybe the the best amount that you should keep it around will be maybe 20,000 uh, edges and maybe a few thousand faces. You shouldn't want to reach the hundreds, definitely. You don't want to reach the hundreds of thousands uh, on this statistic corner because um, if you are planning to make an animation, uh, the characters are really going to be uh, already pretty high poly, maybe like 50k edges and face or faces and you're still going to have animation in there, you're going to have rigging so it's going to be a bit a bit heavy if you, your environment itself has a bit too many faces or edges And when I'm done busy making the cupboards, these cupboards here, what I would do is, as you can see here in the reference, there are other cupboards that look kind of the same. So I would just shift D the, the model and then just edit it a bit uh, on the side here and apply the motor modifier so that I can add another motor modifier that makes it a double cupboard like in the reference. And another thing for the, to make the, the scene a bit lighter on your computer is that you don't shift D the models. The models that you want to keep the same but have duplicates of, like in this reference, you Alt D the model. So that, as you can see here, when I'm Alt Ding, the edges and faces, they do not add more whenever I add more models. Basically, it just copies the exact model uh, of the first one. So that if you edit the, the first one, or any of these models, all the models will change because they're taking data from one model so they're all basically the same thing but multiples of the same thing you see whereas if you do shift d it duplicates the thing but it adds more memory it adds more faces and edges so it fills up your scene up way way faster and now i'm going to show another technique that i use for the fruits here i didn't make the exact fruits in the reference because uh, i didn't actually know what fruits these were so i made bananas because you know I like bananas, so I made bananas. So I brought in a curve, a path curve, and I brought the depth of the curve 
data a bit higher so that I can be 3D geometry and I made the resolution lower so that I can have hard edges like a banana normally has. And I deleted two of the phase, uh, two of the vertices because you don't actually need a lot. You just need one in the middle and two on the edges. And Alt S is to scale in a curve. Uh, so I scaled the, the edges smaller and the, the middle thicker. So that is our banana fruit thing. If you want to make other fruits, you can basically use the same uh, technique. If you want to make a lemon, maybe you can use you can use the same thing also. Just make it not curved, you know, and make it smaller. Now I'm going to move on to the chair because it has a bit more complicated technique than the cupboards. The cupboards are uh, just simple squares or cubes, but the chair, I brought in a circle. I made it a bit lower, like maybe 25 vertices, and I mirrored it just like the cupboard so that I can focus on one side. You wouldn't want to shade smooth the, the chair because it'll make all the flat faces a bit weird. So you auto smooth it. What auto smooth basically does is it smooths all the faces that are round, but then the flat faces, it leaves it flat. And then I made the backrest and the legs uh, through the faces of the circle itself because then it's not a separate object, you know, it's all the same thing. And the final example that I will make here, so that you can see the technique of it, is the uh, dishes rack here in the corner. It's basically just a plane that I also murdered because then I don't have to model both parts. Uh, it's a plane that I brought in a couple of loop, uh, loop cuts, so Control R. And I extruded the edges here, as you can see. And then I added a wireframe modifier. Right, so that it can be racks, you know? <laughs> it can be racks. Um, I didn't add the curve here in the middle. I actually made it flat because it's going to be in the corner there so you don't have to want to add unnecessary geometry to a model that you will barely see so I just made it flat as I did here And that's it for our tutorial, basic techniques on modeling. And the next one will probably be about composition and blocking out the scene. Alright boy.